Uh, so the horse Artax dies in the swamp. Okay, first of all, don't take him in the swamp. Don't take a horse in the swamp, especially since you know that that kind of shit goes on in the swamp. Don't take him in the swamp. And, you know, if, if, if the swamp supposedly swallows what, up people what based if you on have their to get, levels. What if you have to get somewhere that's beyond the swamp and that's the only way? Go around the fucking swamp. <laughs> Um, hi, I'm John Kadolf. I am one of the lost blokes, and uh, I am on the road. I'm on vacation in Texas, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and I'm heading to see my son right now. We're going to go and play some Pokemon Go at a park, and uh, um, I'm here to uh, to review uh, the never-ending story with my other blokes. If you have if you have a horse. If you if you have a swamp that feeds off of sadness, then it's by creature, not by group. And so the horse sinks in, and the kid's freaking out. Treyu's like losing it. Oh, you got it! Ah! Well, oh, okay, okay. So why didn't the swamp swallow him in his infinite sadness for losing our tax? I think it was waiting for him to come back wearing his Joy Division shirt. Hi, I'm Dave Nesbitt, and uh, usually I'd be having a beer, but uh, I'm having a cocktail today. So oh, I'm I'm having a scotch on the rocks. Nice. Yep. I decided that I needed a gin, but I, I, then I, I also can't... threw in some uh, strawberry lemonade into it too. So it's a really refreshing kind of cocktail. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so okay, let me. I'll just plug in on on some of the other points, and you guys can can uh, refute me at will. Yeah, I'm, go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend the entire time you're not on screen taking you down for this. Yeah. But okay, okay. <laughs> so uh, camera, you know the drill. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the only person I had any any com- com- you know compelling feeling for at all was the 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 uh, the empress, um, because she really seemed to kind of know what was going on the whole time. Um, but was she telling there you? Was the, no. And, oh, sorry. <laughs> I was fine with with uh, Never Never Land getting destroyed. Um, well, it's, pre- it's pretty dark, John. <laughs> well, you know, because you know the Empress, you know, she still she still had her her castle floating around in in uh, in, in the Astral um, Plane. So oh, that's I, I, fine. So, did you make the connection that the Empress is a stand-in for his mother? That the Empress was the boy's mother. That she is a uh, she is kind of an emotional stand in, an emotional stand in for his mother, who he lost. No, I because you said okay. that Artax was the stand in for his mother. Uh, well, uh, no, I said that his grief in that moment was the grief over his mother. I didn't say, but she is the actual stand in oh. character for the for the. Well, mother. you know, we didn't see the mother die, so it none of that compels me whatsoever. You know, we didn't, we didn't, uh, we weren't, we well, weren't. I mean, we didn't. You know, didn't, if. if if the movie had if the movie had started off with the little boy at his mom's funeral and like you know losing his shit, I would understand all this, you know, mishy mashy turmoil well, so, going on. So you know, uh, so it'd be Raiders of the Lost Ark. It began with him being chased by a boulder, but uh, that, you know, you didn't have any context for that. Maybe if mom was ran over by a boulder while we were you know, watching the town, we'd give a fuck. And so basically, we'll sit around at some point in time and get very, very drunk and possibly have a brawl over this film. So I think, know, I, I, I think, I think if there's ever going to be a fist fight between me and John over a movie, it's going to be this one. Yeah. Isn't that just the best Hold crossover that is, ever? That's okay, amazing. that's awesome. Isn't that fantastic? Yes. <laughs> Adventure yeah. time, yeah. never ending story. Yes. Wow. Okay, oh, okay. Now, okay. now I've, I've got to pull up my. Oh. <laughs> Are you in your car? Hi, Cat. Yeah, I'm in Texas. <laughs> uh, who am I? <laughs> Stares plaintively, whimsically at the sea, 
sings it like you were gonna soulfully hold for a minute and 32 seconds. I think you're going to hold up a skull and do some Shakespeare there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> no, there we go. no. Every time, every time so I, I hear the words "Who am I?", I always think of Moana um, oh. and the reprise she does when she's out in the middle of the ocean talking to oh, yeah. Ghost Grandma. I am the Mad Hat Cat. I am twenty five percent of the Lost Blokes, and uh, partially just because I, I don't have uh, anything super in theme, but like Leinen Kugel sounds German, oh, and like this movie is based on a German book, right? By, Mike, by Michael Endy. I'm pretty yeah. sure, yes. Yep. yep, I actually have the book. I just bought it, I'm reading it now. Um, <laughs> well, first, that sounds like fun. It is, it's the <laughs> he first He said <laughs> incredibly seriously. So, so uh, Dave- Not a and, hint of disdain. <laughs> Kat, Dave and John and I have been spending the last 10 minutes, argue, uh, well, it's mostly John, Dave and, uh -huh. and I are, are basically thinking about when we will be in front of the judge uh, describing to him why we decked John in the face. <laughs> yeah. gentlemen, gentlemen, what exactly was your reason for this? He didn't like never ending stories, so I hit him with a pillow. Full yeah. Of yeah. Wow. yeah, yeah, I said, All right. well, I already. I... I, I already suppose gave we could call that self-defense because you're attacking our very souls. <laughs> on my Womp. couch, I could probably put a couple of sinker blocks in them. They're so big. <laughs> oh, right, that's cool. That I, I fully expect that when, Dave, when Dave hits me with when Dave hits me with his pillow, it's going to be like filled with dildos. <laughs> yep. Dildo <laughs> the pillow. It's so, John, look at what are those bruises on your face that look like mushrooms? Uh, well, <laughs> on the list of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life was showing up at the back when uh, Lover's Luxuries was still 24 hours, walking in after a samurai show, one o'clock in the morning, and there's a drunk dude <laughs> of sitting there looking at the fucking machine they have. He turns it on, and the thing smacks him in the face. There oh. is a sign then, on that thing that says, please do not touch. For a reason. Signs are your friends. And most of the time. then he, he looked at it, paused, and then turned it on again. And Mushroom Camp, yeah. My review is going to be more compelling than the never ending story. Um, so you have, you have, uh, you know, this kid who we don't, who we, who we, who we can't possibly have any idea what his deal is because. They, they show no reason for us to be uh, uh, attached to him. He's reading a book that is this fantasy His land. mom died. It's fine. Yeah, we but they don't show that. You can't make inferences. Yeah, but we hear it. <laughs> we, wanted, we, we were basically You must make the, the inference. We, 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 we can't uh, mom get run over with a boulder or something. To see. <laughs> he wants to see. Yeah. He, he needs to I see the see pet him. cemetery scene where the, the mom gets hit by a truck. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. I, I got the, and, the, I, and the dad is there going like, all right, well, I, I I've shed my single tear, stiff upper lip now. I got yep. the impression the mom did not die from a sudden instance. It was probably a disease, like a slow oh. burn. Yeah, no, the, uh, the, the, the sadness that Bastion has uh, doesn't seem like a shell-shocked kind of uh, loss of a parent. It seems much more like like so, like so something maybe, like he's he's been getting like not numb to it for a while, mm -hmm. but it's it's all just weighing so heavy on him. Mm -hmm. Um, so so I I've never read the book. I always at least from the movie have kind of imagined it to be like she was sick for a while and they didn't tell Bastion until it was like pretty close to the end. Like maybe she had like six months left, maybe even less than that. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, Bastion. And he, um, he's, hope, he's already know. technically accepted it. It's just so hard. Mm -hmm. So, we're, so we're, in other we're words. We're going to have your grade school uh, graduation a little early because mom won't be able to attend. Why is oh, that? That's horrible. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so is it so, bad that so I think that's horrible and sad, but I, the way you're phrasing it made me laugh. <laughs> Irish humor. There's, there's like dark humor, black humor, singularity humor. <laughs> Irish humor, and then under that is first responder humor. And then there's Nesbitt humor. I'll it made that. me laugh because I had no attachment to the to the death of his mom because they don't show it. And I, I, I want to say that that Dan compared Dan compared the, the death of, of Artax to the death of his mother. 
And I'm starting to get the, the, yes. the sense that, yeah. yeah, you know, maybe that is the case because it was a long, drawn out sequence that was much longer than it needed to be because I couldn't give a damn about the horse. Who cares? Oh, you we don't know the your... horse. The, the I'm horse a fucking monster. <laughs> the horse. You are the nothing. I'm pretty sure that's why you're in a car Whoa. because you are driving across the country to just tear down take everything. A horse, take a shit on the <laughs> thing that feeling and imagination. Enjoy. You're yeah. you're on a cross okay, country so tour of destruction. <laughs> we we've first? known the horse for like five minutes. And of call you John film. Shapiro. <laughs> Oh, oh! No, no John really, Shapiro I mean, is the dad. Okay. Dad, the dad is John Shapiro. Who cares? Who, cares, who cares if the horse dies? We've only known him for five I minutes. Care. I care. Are you and fucking I'm, kidding me? I sobbed okay. during that scene. I haven't watched that movie I, in maybe I did like eight to ten years. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and then I was watching it the other day, like while I was finishing stuff up at work before I went out of town. I've got my headphones on. I've got my phone over here, and as I'm like you know, grinding stuff down, uh, yanking things out with tool, hurting my stupid arm. I, I hear Artex, Artex, you've got to get up. I just, I look back to see the horse just like, what's the point though? Yeah. But no words, words no words are like. I mean, I mean they, they <laughs> no. And doesn't, doesn't Atreyu, uh, doesn't the actor playing Atreyu really saw that there's, a, that there's oh a- Oh my God, Artex he does is a bad though. actor too. Okay, John, I think I, I, I think uh, between Minus all the comments, 3, 000, 3, yes. blood points. Be jail, besides all the stuff that I already Star have Hulk. you saying. Hey guys. Thousand years. Uh and um oh, what's that giant giant uh rock eater? Uh, uh, no, no, the the the, the flying well, thing with blisters all over the back. Val Val Falcor. They're not blisters. Falcor. Oh God, that's disgusting! Oh. What are all these? What are all these? What are all these waxy boils on the back of this dog? Why? I, why? I used I used to get kind of freaked out by that because I I did have the same like, but I want to say that that particular design is kind of like a blending of Western and Eastern. Uh, yeah. artistic renditions of dragons um because yeah, like the the bu the bubbly things like they're not quite he's, he's scales a he's a puppy dragon yeah, also, why yes. does he have waxy boils all over so it <laughs> reminded not waxy, me they it reminded they're me they're like they're pearlescent okay <laughs> it, it reminded <laughs> me personally it reminded me personally of that video that was circulating on the internet for a while with um that dog mm -hmm who had all of those giant maggots in his back oh, yeah. and and all the, there were like 50 little holes and that person just goes up and goes like this and all the maggots come flying up out of those holes okay. that's, that's what that was that's what Falcor reminds also me. an animal deserving of my compassion my iasis is an infection that occurs when maggots infest and feed on the living tissue of animals or humans it's most common in tropical and subtropical countries. People who have difficulty maintaining good oral hygiene are particularly at risk. Larvae can settle in areas of the mouth where hygiene is poor. Eating maggots is also thought to leave the internal organs and tissue susceptible to the larvae, although myiasis is more commonly something that occurs under the skin. The maggots that cause myiasis can live in the stomach and intestines as well as the mouth. This can cause serious tissue damage and requires medical attention. Man, I want you to I want you to post that whole video in along with uh no. Uh, Absolutely so, or at not. least a clip. I've, I've heard enough footage missing. Footage <laughs> missing. So um Bastion is a uh, I don't know if he's like 10 or 11, but he's a boy that wakes and up. And I don't like the name either. Okay. Bastion Just call him Sebastian. Hey, Bastion. No, his name is hey. Bastion. It's a very like Why? medieval I, I, knight kind of name. You know, I bet you, I bet you, haven't read the book, but I bet you that Bastion's mother was a super big fan of things like the Canterbury Tales and uh, uh, Token and just all sorts of like she was fantastical, wonderful things. And I, I bet uh, she almost named him like Lancelot or Arthur. 
And the dad was like, I mean, eh. I'm like, all right, Bastion. She also, she also, right. she also, she also wrote Cannibal Holocaust. So, hey, uh, what? All right, okay, Tra- uh, Dave. Keep going, Dan. Dave, uh, let's go on a little track here before I can get back into my plot synopsis. Maybe you can right. address um, the squishiness of this movie. Is it squishy approved, and why? It is totally squishy approved. Um, the entire notion of squishiness is the idea that your imagination can alter reality. And in this case, um, his imagination is what allows him to basically handle reality where his mom has died, his dad is a dick, he's got reviewers who hate his guts, he's got three kids who keep chasing him down the, and bullying the shit out of him. And basically he's using it as a means to escape. And also the idea that you can, the squishiness of this is that there's two, um, you've got the element of Atrio going through and doing everything in the story, at the same time, you have the kid who is basically kind of like um, reading the story and then realizing that he's basically functionally a part of it. And I love that element because it was the way that all of us, I think, escaped in school to deal with, you know, um, all the shit well, we and not to just, deal with. Not just escape, but also uh, just as a coping mechanism. Yeah. Because um, like there's there's escape that's like unhealthy escape, and then there's like okay, this is a little bit of a reprieve. We're using it to cope and to process all the shit that's happening. Real quick, I wanna I wanna just make a point that that I I I, I very reluctantly say that this film is uh, mythos approved because the very existence of it drove me mad. Okay. <laughs> all right, uh, you're you're like. You're not quite approaching the level of animosity that I had for Damon Packard uh, and Reflections of Evil, <laughs> but he's getting there. He's getting. You're getting close. Right. You're getting Reflections. close. Dave, Dave well, squishy. Okay. Is it so- squishy? Dave, Dave, is it squishy? <laughs> <laughs> is it squishy approved? Bam. Yep, squishy approved. Um, <laughs> and where were we at with that? You were saying he was using fantasy. <laughs> Not at, like in Mazes and Monsters to escape reality and to be, go deeper into psychosis, but using uh, fantasy to cope with a loss, which is which, which psychiatrists would all, I think, uniformly tell you that is a healthy way to approach something. And I think that part of it is also like the playing idea Dungeons, that Dungeons and Dragons. Yes, yes. Like so, playing Dungeons and Dragons. Mm-hmm. John, it's a good thing you're in Texas because if you cut me off one more time, I'm going to smack the taste out of your mouth. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> All right, Dave. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. Squishy approved. Uh, yeah. Tell us why. Squishy approved, but I think part of it is also the capacity that we all had to sit there and find a book that really spoke to us because we could see ourselves in the hero. Atriu is far from perfect. He makes mistakes. He's clearly, you know, feeling the same way that the kid is. And it's a reflection of something that he can sit there and go, wait a minute. He overcame, so I can overcome. Wait a minute. We're both part of this story. By the way, this is the film that goes, hey, look. There's a fourth wall. Let's take off and nuke it from orbit. Fuck you. <laughs> and here's the fifth and sixth, seventh, and eighth wall, and they're gone too. <laughs> we're playing 5D chess on blotter acid. Let's go. So, so plots. We are combating the nothing with uh, the what, what would we call it? The something or the everything? Yeah, and the instead every- of like j- just leaving a void in its wake, it breaks down walls and like opens you up to all of these other paths new, and new, AUs. New possibilities. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. you have, I mean, there is that element of they have the nothing. We have an omniverse. <laughs> yes. I have an army. We have a Hulk. Yes. You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> um, so the first scene of the movie, um, he wakes up and then he talks to his dad. He says he has a dream about his dead mom and she, uh, and, and instead of engaging with him and talking to him, he kind of uh, stares at his bills and says, you got to get your head out of the clouds, uh, which uh, Dave shared a meme recently by Ben Shapiro where Ben said, uh, so my kids were just playing imagination, pretending to be fairies and wizards. I got pretty annoyed and explained, and maybe also yelled a bit, that magic isn't real and they were being ridiculous. So my kids are crying and my wife is furious, but am I really in the wrong here? Yes. Yes, you are, you horrible, horrible fucking human being. Yes. I'm super sorry that you, you know, never got to have a childhood and yeah. that uh, no one ever told you that your inner world mattered, Ben. So- uh <laughs> Weirdly, he, but, he, is, 
he has made a career kind of a, a side career out of like being sort of a Star Wars, one of the more toxic Star Wars fans. So Ew, I, I what? He, I've never been that part. Yeah. I'm going to forget that. that. I, I, think, I think what he um, uh, is afraid his children are going to do if they're playing wizard is is embrace the, uh, the, the more woke side of Star Wars, which is great. <gasps> oh, but, no. Oh, I ben Shapiro is the dark side. Yes, yeah. he is. He's the nothing. either that or may maybe when he was young, he was a super, super, super big but nerdy, nerdy Star Wars kid, and got his ass kicked all the time for it, and it that just yeah. it, it broke him because so, he never found anything so, like the never ending so, story to help him grow in a positive direction. Let's let's give him the positive the, the benefit of the doubt and suggest to him maybe some books or movies that he could share with his children. <laughs> that would that would open their imagination. No 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 sort of truth for him. Like yeah. the kids can maybe find it on their own. Okay. There I I know way way too many dudes like I've never I've never known a feminine person to have gotten like weird over the over that series I love the sort of truth series I can't go near what it yet it? I'm still uh the sort of truth um I've never heard the of the, fr the first book is called wizard's first rule mm -hmm. um it's it's basically like kind of a it has kind of a Star Wars vibe in that uh like like it's high fantasy but you've got a semi chosen one um and you know you you're gathering your your team. There's of course a magical sword involved, um, and uh, I, I'm sure Bastion would love this series because the wizard's name is Zedekus Zul Surrender, and that's uh -huh. the best wizard name ever. <laughs> um, but uh, I think I've but, heard but, yeah. of that. Well, and like well, the the all sort these of truth. Rules, Wait. Yeah. It, oh, Was that Legend of the Seeker? Yes, they did. Well, I think I've... that was the name of, oh! of the uh, of the series. Yeah, it's like a movie called The Seeker. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> no, no, no. Legend of the Seeker, the TV series. Yeah, the the Legend of the Seeker. I I only watched a little bit of it, and from the little bit I saw, it almost had kind of a kind of a Hercules legendary journeys, Xena warrior princess, uh, uh, Raimi brothers vibe to it. Um, but maybe like slightly more yeah, serious. And the Lord, um, the I don't Lord think it does. were hot. Oh my God. Yes. No, even before they even like anyone had done any kind of artistic renderings that I had found, the second they mentioned the Mord Sith in that first book, I'm just like, I am yours, mistress. Yep. Take and, me. And, 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 and I've met, hung out, and drunk with, and gotten drunk with the actor who played. Uh, dark and raw. Um, but, but yeah, anyway, yeah, um, sort, sort of truth with, um, story that never with, with ends. A, a, especially it's, with the, the wizard's fourth rule, um, it's uh, deserve victory. And that like really, really strays easily into bootstraps mentality, alt right oh. shit. So like it's uh, kind of sucks. I, hope, I, has, I don't think anybody's ever done that with never ending story. This movie has a healthier version of that where he has to uh, right. accept his own worth. Uh, yeah, but Dave, Dave, before I get back into the plot synopsis, I don't know if we finished with your squishy approval. Love okay. you guys. Love you too, guys. Drive safe, you heartless cunt. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that the the squishy part for me is the idea that you can basically, you know, create your own reality and create your own magic or use your own ability to, you know, you know use these tools to basically help you deal with the reality that you've been given and make it into something better. And to me, that's what absolutely makes it squishy. And then of course, there's the other element of it, of um, literally the moments of um, where the fourth wall is being broken and the fifth wall is being broken. And I don't know when the next yes, yeah. wall, but we're gonna blow the living shit out of that damn thing. Yep. Uh, to me, I think that the key element there is that it basically says that as much as books exist kind of as a static medium, it's not so mm -hmm. much that for the person reading. Because a really good book, you tend to spend a lot of time thinking about yourself in the context of that book. Seeing yourself as the protagonist, seeing yourself as the hero. And th this movie is very explicit about that. In fact, when he goes to the bookstore. So uh, just, just to quick get there from where I was at, his um, so he goes to school. He's going to school. He gets uh, picked on by bullies, thrown in a garbage can, uh, gets out, uh, gets chased by them again, and ends up in a bookstore. 
and the bookstore owner asks him something. You said a bookstore. Book bookstore. Sorry. A little young for that yet, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think I said that, but I could have since I had. No, no, it just sounded like I'm sorry. Please continue. Mm -hmm. Um, so he gets into the bookstore and uh, the bookstore owner is uh, not just asking him if he likes books because he is pretty well read for a kid. He's read Lord of the Rings, he's read uh, Last of the Mohicans, but he says- Oh, no, no, you, you forgot the part where he's like actively trying to turn him away. He's oh, got yeah. to test his, he's got to test his worthiness. But there's always yeah. the feeling through the whole thing that he's, he's trying to get him interested in this book. Oh yeah, no, it's, it's, to it's totally, you don't want any interest to do yeah. with this. The same you? reason why I the same reason why I got hooked into Fangoria. It's like, oh, you can't read this. This is this is, this yeah. is bad for you. you know? <laughs> That's like the ultimate way to make sure your kid reads. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, oh, this no, no, it's uh it's it's maybe a little too scary for you. Um yeah. although I'll, you know, I'll, I'll have to say my parents leave the book allowing of me to read Fangoria, but perfectly the, within breach. All the other groups out there that didn't want you to read it when you were little. Okay. But um yeah, so um, so he's he's getting him interested in this book. Finally, he says uh, he doesn't ask him, "Have have you read Lord of the?" He says, "Have you been Captain Nemo? Have you been this person?" Uh -huh. um, he's actually trying to get one hundred and eighty six books at home. Yeah, he's trying to get his hooks into this kid to get him to 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 see that this book is about empathy. That he's supposed to, uh, when he's reading this book, he's not just supposed to experience it as a vicarious adventurer, which, which is sort of the way uh, the toxic Star Wars fans would like to look at Luke Skywalker. He's our hero, mm -hmm. he's this big thing, but someone who has flaws like Luke Skywalker is of Last Jedi, and you can relate to him because of that. And um, and uh, so so he, he, he steals the book and um, then he goes to school, reads it in But the he attic. leaves a note that says, don't worry, I'll bring it back. Yes. Because he's a nice boy. Yes. Yeah. And He's a so, nice boy. Yeah, so he gets the he gets the book into the attic, starts reading it, and then we go on the adventure of the movie within a movie, where, where um, Atreyu is hi is hired by the citizens of Fantasia. Yeah, hired. I don't know what he's being paid, but by the by well, the... I mean he's 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 being summoned. Yes. Uh, you know, by by uh, I assume like the ch the chief advisor, the 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 chamberlain. Yes. Uh, the 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 royal vizier of yeah. um that guy of the childlike empress right and, and I I love that guy by the way like he's so like just defeated and dramatic and <laughs> I ju I ju I just love it every time I can say, I have terrible news the <laughs> empress is dying. <laughs> It's so no that's, one, that's, that's one of the things about John's review that was like really irking me because it's pretty explicit in the story what's going on there. Um, yeah. It's not it's, you don't have to see the tragedy. But to, 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 I, I was going to say as as far as like you know doing the exposition dance, it's yeah. a very brief dance because uh, I mean it it is a little bit of a kids movie and I'm sure because it's a fantasy movie. Um, you know, they they wanted to make sure that you had a little bit of a setup, um, mm. but like, I I think that's what's so kind of cool. Like, uh, er, er, some people sometimes kind of like relegate fantasy and fairy stories to being overly simplistic, um, especially in the beginning. Like, once upon a time there was the evil, but then the champion was summoned and the champion set off to go defeat the evil. Mm -hmm. And like, well, yeah, we have the simple setup so that we can just get right into the shit. The childlike empress and her grand vizier, whatever, have summoned Atreyu uh, from the the plains people, uh, the, the people, the plains people who hunt the purple buffalo, yes. which it's not explicitly in the movie, uh, calling them any kind of like IRL indigenous equivalent. Um, it's always made me feel a little bit weird that Atreus played by a guy who, from what I can read, like his parents are both European. Yeah, he was in. The, I don't he was actually a child. He, actor. But he was, but he was, but he was tan. So he, he was in the Battlestar Galactica movie and TV series back in the seventies. Yeah, he was. Yeah. In in any case, I I love the kid who plays Atreyu. I I think 
I think for being such a young actor, he really does a good job with what he's given in this. Um, and I love it when he when he comes up, uh, he's got kind of the same thing that Bastion is going through. People are underestimating him. Um, and for Atreyu, it's because like he's not a grown man and like everyone laughs at him as he and his horse walks through the assembly and say, excuse me, this is no place for children. We are waiting for Atreyu, the great warrior. It's like, I'm Atreyu. Oh, oh. But, if, but, but if, you don't, if you don't want me, I can go back to- Yeah, no, I love that. No, it's cool. I'm, you, you don't want me? I'm out. Wait, no. We're Which, kind it, of fucking desperate. It's, we'll take it, kid. It's fine. Apparently, apparently, it's difficult to hunt the purple buffalo. So I, uh, no. that's another thing that's uh, in. Uh, I mean, uh, that uh, you have to be able to infer things in this movie. I, I love that it's written kind of for adults, and children are just kind of. Um, it's sort of written the way Jim Henson writes things, where it's yeah. written, the kids are along for the ride. Yeah, the kids are more along for the ride. It's you you don't us. you don't need to talk down to them. You don't need to dumb things down so that they can pick up every single detail within the story it's mm -hmm. it's it's i i think movies like that and i'm i i have a ton of people who were like actually alive and sentient when this movie came out unlike me That's um who have like continued to grow up with it and continue to love it because every time they watch it new layers keep getting added on because as you grow older and you get more experiences with different things uh, you you come to understand certain parts, and I'm sure that uh, for some people, maybe not everyone, there have been times where they're like, you know, I I I get why Bastion's dad is shutting himself off so harshly because you know now he's the the only parent, and yes, he was probably always the breadwinner, but now he's like, ah feelings yeah. with the child I, don't yeah. don't, I don't know what to, uh, i don't think the movie sees uh, him as a, a villain eat so your much eggs as, dad eat your eggs i don't think the movie sees him as so much as a villain as it does uh he's he he doesn't have a way to fill the vacuum that um, yeah yeah he's he's he's, he's, he's not he's not prepared for it thing. yeah he's 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 doing the best with what he's got i wish he would try a little harder yeah but. so do i <laughs> No, he's he's definitely not the villain in this. Um, so Atreyu, yes, has accepted the mission, uh, but he's kind of yeah, gi given the instructions that you can't take anything with you. You have to leave your weapons behind and you must go alone. And uh, it doesn't quite become as clear that like, no, you have to go alone until, uh, I mean, he and Artax are, are going all over Fantasia and, you know, just trying to get a lead somewhere or other on, you know, something that can uh, cure the Empress's illness. Um, and they're just finding nothing. And uh, on his way to find the oldest being in Fantasia, Morla the Ancient One, uh, and she resides in the Swamps of Sadness. Mm -hmm. And uh, while going through there, I mean, you know, it's a swamp. It's it's deep, it's sticky, and there's this like horrible, depressing music music playing. And at a certain point, like Atreyu finally finds a little bit of flat, uh, solid ground to pull himself up onto, and Artax just just stops. And um, in the book, from what I understand it, Artax actually talks. Yeah, and I haven't gotten to that he, point yet, but that's what I heard. He's, I, I won't give it away, but he's he's speaking to Atreyu as he's sinking into the swamp of sadness, uh -huh. but. Rooting. I'm I'm actually I'm actually like it almost makes it sound like it would be more sad if he was talking, but I think in in film form it works for Artax not to be speaking mm -hmm. because even just that that look on on his face with those big horsey eyes and his eyelashes and just slowly Artax Artax you're sinking and and, and this is why um uh, the the scene with the horse um and, and, and yeah it did affect me strongly but um. So, so the, the the word uh, compassion actually means to suffer with. And if you listen to at the end of the movie when she says that he's been the the viewers have been along on the journey with the reader this whole time and the adventurer. He's been with says, you. Yeah. You were with oh, no, him. he doesn't say he's he been. Alone does, she does not say he. She does not say he's been with you. She says he has suffered with you. Yeah. 
which is uh, the, what the word compassion means, it means to suffer with. And um, so he's supposed to be, uh, as he's reading, uh, that's why, I mean, I don't want to jump ahead, but that's, that's why that scene is triple times more effective than anything that John was reading there. Um, yeah. There's, there's the, there's, uh, it's not about the horse, it's about his mom, but it's also, you know, your ability to reach out to a character and see what he's going through and to recognize it in yourself. Yeah. Well, and throughout this whole thing, you know, it's it's kind of a mixture of like, yes, you sometimes have to go through go through things on your own. And I mean, I, I I'm pretty sure that I have, uh, you know, rabble rabbled about this in the past about something or other about this trope of, uh, you know, when, when it's a, a, a young male antagonist, almost always they are this, even if they're not the so-called chosen one, they have to be this, this singular go it alone character. Um, whereas often with a, uh, a young female protagonist, she tends to get a, a, a group, a team. And um, it's starting to change a little bit in contemporary media, but um, yeah, I, I know that sometimes, yes, you do have to go things alone. There are some things that are you're going through that only you can pull yourself out of to like jut you through into the future. Um, I was a weird way of saying that, to push you through into the future, but uh, like nobody does anything alone. The nobody does got, anything alone. The movie and the book are saying he's not alone. He's got to show you and he's got exactly. the, writer, the writer of the book mm -hmm. who must have had that in him to, to bring it out. Yeah. Uh, even if, well, he, and, even if and, that writer died hundreds of years before you were born, you know, someone else felt that way. Yeah. yeah. And, and while you're going through all those things by yourself with someone else, having compassion for others, uh, suffering with them um, is sometimes a way to kind of bring you out of your own struggles and not necessarily ignore them, but, you know, find a way to exist in the world again. Pro and process uh, that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I, I, even though, you, you know, you've got a tray, you like, you must go alone. And he loses his best friend in the swamps of sadness. Because like two scenes later. What is life even? <laughs> Nihilism. Yeah. What's, what's the point of even going on a tray? I, uh, carrots, carrots well, can't actually, even keep me alive. Goodbye. Yeah. We haven't spoken to anyone in such a long time. And of course, like, us in the audience going like, we need you to say the thing faster. We've got to go do the thing. But she she mentions this thing called the Southern Oracle. And he's like, cool, cool. That's fine. How do I get there? Uh, you can't. <laughs> it's 10,000 miles away. And then, and then poor Trey's like, but that's so far. <laughs> that's so far. And like, I know some people think he might like being dramatic at that point, unnecessarily dramatic, but I'm like, no, he's already been through so much. And, he and, lost his fucking yeah, best friend. Yeah. And it's just, it's, and, it's so much. And, man. He's, and, and at every moment, so you, have, you have to look at everything Atreyu is going through as really mm -hmm. about Bastion. So when he says it's so far, that's what Bastion is feeling. Yeah. So, um, I, I can't exactly remember what happens. Uh, so either I'm going to have to go that's through and stop to so you guys remember why, what happens it. after. Uh, that's why I Rola say it's quick. Him about because really, the, once the he Southern finds Oracle. out, then Falcor shows up and takes him 9,999 miles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. So you, 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 you've taken me the whole way? <laughs> no, only 900,000. Does anyone else, like, I, I don't want a remake. Uh, or a reboot of of the never ending story, but if it were if it were to come to pass, um, I would really really love George Takei to play Falcor. Oh, that'd be awesome! Oh, I, I, because every I'll time I hear him, I I think about George. I like, yeah. So, but how did you do it? With luck. <laughs> yeah. So so basically, it's all, all a big setup for the next for the final test, really, before everything kind of gets revealed, is that he has to prove his worth but he's not proving his worth to some external force he's actually proving his worth to himself yeah by mm -hmm. going through this um the sphinx thing where you have to walk past the sphinx and and be confident <laughs> and it it, it, it it comes to the strangest the only moment that kind of rings kind of goofy to me is when uh 
you know, after um, Bastion is yelling, be confident, be confident on the book. And, and I think there's a jump scare at some point. And he, he throws the book like he just got scared. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, you, you know what that is? That's when Atreyu makes it past that first yes. uh, level of the Oracle, like the, the zappy oh, laser eyes. Okay. Um, but then the next one, I don't remember what it's called, but, but it's basically a, a, a mirror, the, yes, the cave of self-reflection or something. And as Atreyu approaches it, he doesn't really see himself. Like there's a little bit of his own reflection there, he's but then Bastion. suddenly he's looking at Bastion as though he's standing right in front of him up in that uh, attic area in Bastion school. And he's watching Bastion read the book. Uh -huh. And there, there's like, I don't think there's any dialogue happen. It's what? just that oh. like very plaintive. Boom. What's even weirder about that scene, I don't know if you're going to touch on this in a minute or not, but mm. uh, as as a tree walks through the cave to get to that mirror, he's seeing murals of things that he's just done. <laughs> so uh, we're uh, so the character in just, the so the character doesn't that happen after it. Uh, oh, because that's right, just before right. he meets Gamora. Okay, you're right. You're right. You're right. So um, he he sees a uh, uh, Bastion in the mirror. Uh, Bastion freaks out and throws the book. Um, the fuck, the fuck, the fuck. Yeah, and this is the moment that the 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 uh, the, the bookseller was talking about that some books are he called it dangerous, but this but um, a book that asks you to confront something that you're dealing with is basically what mm -hmm. he's saying. So he's getting to that moment where he can either retreat into fantasy that doesn't help him. Uh, deal with things or he can move use fantasy to cope with things and yeah. at that moment that's his moment of bravery is picking the book up again and continue yep. to read the yep. and so together bastion and atreyu make it through the second part of the southern oracle yes. <laughs> hey. oh, sorry. Uh, is there another part the the next part of the article oracle is uh uh, the the final the final part of the oracle. Um, I've never understood why there's like two sets of sphinxes, but for whatever reason there are. And the final one's like they're very gentle. Do not fear, betray you. We will not harm you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, he 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 asks them. I I've I've traveled all this way. Uh, the, the 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 empress is dying, and the nothing is consuming Fantasia. Um, you know what what can save her and uh the the oracle says uh you 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 need to bring a human child to fantasia or you need to get in touch with a human child mm -hmm. and atreyu is like cool where do i find one but so he's he atreyu is again kind of at that point we're like well, i just don't know what to do like this whole task is impossible and and as the Oracle is kind of, you know, like you have to find a way. If you don't, Fantasia will fall apart and the nothing will destroy everything. Uh, and Fantasia will be no more. And at that point, I think he's like starting to freak out a little bit. I think that's when he starts calling for Falcor. Uh -huh. Well, the thing about Falcor is he has the, he's the literal visual embodiment of everything his that he's been told not to embrace. He's actually yeah. flying and he doesn't have his feet on the ground. Never give up and good luck will find you. <laughs> when you mentioned Ben Shapiro yeah. uh, telling his kids to stop playing wizards, I like yeah. immediately went back to that opening sequence uh, with Bastion in, in the kitchen with his dad. And his dad just like never, like not even getting slightly eye contact with Bastion except for like a slight pat on the head. I, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I, I'm willing to say, sorry, do I have a good Ben Shapiro voice? Let's see. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm willing to say it's sad that your mom died. I, I'm not willing to watch you be sad that your mom died. Raw egg slurries. Don't care about your feelings, Bastion. <laughs> and Atreyu uh, ends up uh, meeting up with the wolf, Demork. Uh, well, he, yeah, he, he lands he, like on, on, the, on the beach and is like amongst these ruins. Yeah, and there's a moment where the Demorc says, you know, he wants to, to use the nothing to, keep, you know, um, destroy people's hope and all that. But um, yeah. th that's the moment for me when Bastion turns to him and says, okay, if we're going to die anyway, I'm going to die fighting you, you bastard. So that's that moment of, 
well, if there's no hope, then people are so much easier to control. Well, why should I make your life any easier? Right. Yeah, exactly. And, and he, he Hello, doesn't. Hello, more <laughs> aggressive, sapient version of the swamps of sadness. Yeah. Fuck you. You know, the one who killed my friend. So now. And, and, and that is why Atreyu is the greatest warrior in all of Fantasia. Because no matter how much he has lost and been downtrodden this entire journey, it, it may be, well, and, and they even say at the very beginning, I think the Vizier says, like, it's pretty hopeless. Like, your chances of success are, they're not great. <laughs> but still, Atreyu is like, it doesn't matter. I am going to fight till the very last, you know, until my very last breath. And mm -hmm. I will not stop fighting until then. Yeah, and it's <laughs> um, and, and that's also what Bastion is, is being encouraged with. And mm -hmm. um, his, that encouragement comes through storytelling. Not every story and not every type of storytelling is going to connect with people in the same way. And not and in different times of your life, too. Well, and I've had things that yeah. I'm sure that the writer didn't even intend to connect with me that connect with me when it came to me when I needed it or whatever. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. Even, a, even a bad piece of even, you know, like something that's terrible. Maybe there's mm -hmm. like a kernel in there that I needed to hear or see or. At, at this point, the nothing has basically consumed everything, and they are just kind of flying through this void where there there are like little bits and pieces, like uh, you know, bits of rock, a bit of a pillar here, like some dust there, and every everything is like really heckin' sad. And they do have that kind of like it's it's not overwhelming sadness, breaking down, weeping kind of thing, but you know, it is kind of a quiet defeat, like. The, it, it happens the nothing we, to, we failed the, this has to be the, the only uh, chil children's movie that ends in the, re the the destruction of all reality <laughs> yeah yeah oh, now uh they but but you know that e even at this point falcor is like it's good to have have a little faith it's good to not give up and uh atreyu says like well, we still have the Orin, and uh kind of kind of like says says a little prayer well, to even, the orb and says if if uh if we can i i can't exactly remember like what he uh asks it to help them find if there's um, anything left them, uh, bring it to yeah us. if there's anything left and it leads them to the ivory tower which is is still intact on this floating bit of rock by the way i i love the design of the ivory tower anyway uh it, it has a very vulva looking point to it which i don't think is necessarily like explicit or sexual but it does have that kind of like you know this this is the 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 womb of fantasia this is where mm -hmm. all life springs forth from and uh i mean it's it's not not hugely subtle <laughs> so they 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 see it in the distance they see the ivory tower and like this kind of epic organ music starts playing um and atreyu uh goes like into the inner sanctum of uh the childlike empress and even in uh just all this darkness uh the ivory tower is still exuding like this this very fuzzy white uh light that just like you know nothing almost nothing can can break that little uh aurora around it and and when atreyu enters that inner sanctum the childlike empress is there and no she, she doesn't look great she looks a little, a little weak she's she's kind of sitting down but the first thing she says is atreyu why do you look so sad oh, <laughs> i was like i'm sorry have you looked outside <laughs> it kind of sucks out there just pointing <laughs> out <laughs> and and After he says out. But but no, he's 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 he feels like so badly. He says, "I I failed. I the the our our world has been destroyed. I'm so sorry." And you know, she has kind of this little wry smile on her face, and she says, "No, you didn't fail." Uh, but I never I never got in contact with a human child. Yes, you did. There are two thoughts that come to mind. One of them is you know after you going through this entire story, and then finding out that basically he was in touch with the human child the entire time was reading his story and two thoughts came to mind one is after he was sitting there going 
oh, well, that's great. I'm sure he enjoyed my suffering and that and how everything just worked out so wonderfully well. And all I can think of again is the old, old Dennis Miller joke about uh, watching, um, God damn it, uh, The Wizard of Oz. And at the end, when the good witch walks up and goes, but you have the power to go home all along. Yeah. Am I the only person who wanted to see Dorothy reach back and slap the shit out of the witch at that point? Because like, yeah, you yeah, had the power to tell me that damn two you. hours ago. Now, you start, do you give me a flight out of this place? Or I swear to God, I'm going to start throwing dead little people out the door. And the, the destination isn't the point. It's the journey. That's the whole point of the book mm -hmm. and, and the movie. Mm -hmm. In this case, though, being the person who made the journey, I'm sure he's sitting there going, oh, for fuck's sake. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> me, I, as a child and watching it, I enjoyed it for that and thinking that, you know, my reading the stories had an impact. As an adult, part of me is sitting around going, yeah, but my legs hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, so uh, there's the, there's that moment where he, she breaks the fourth wall for him, but then she breaks mm -hmm. the fourth wall for us when she says, "Just as he is sharing all of your adventures, others are sharing his. They were with him when he He's went like, to the bookstore." So then there was I'm a mirror, like, and then there was another mirror, and then the world. Oh collapsed. my! I don't know, the oh my god! Yeah, no, that's absolutely oh. squishy. That actually gives me goosebumps. It's like the movie is directly like acknowledging yeah, you. Yeah. Oh yeah. You. <laughs> like everybody should at that moment just turn and look at the camera, like <laughs> just turn around and see if there's a there's a, you're, you're in a movie yourself. <laughs> it felt like some kind of crazy, insane story written by somebody who was on massive amounts of drugs. <laughs> Mescaline and <laughs> I remember going to uh, go see Jim Butcher, the author, uh, do a, a talk at a local Barnes and Noble, mm -hmm. and somebody asked him about um, what do you think would happen if you were to ever actually be in a situation where you met your main character, Harry Dresden. He's like, well, first of all, I'd be apologizing really, really fast as Harry tried to punch my fucking lights out for all the stuff that I've done to him. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that there is that, again, there is that element of sitting around and feeling it reminds us that when we're, that books are not a static medium. We are, mm -hmm. every bit is, we create the story simply by reading it. And then we change the story simply by growing and reading it again, growing and reading yeah. it again and writing our own little mental fan fictions of the story mm -hmm. and, you know, speculating on the characters and everything else. It becomes a dynamic universe because of our interaction with it. There's it that line, exactly. There's that line, do you all see 12 monkeys? Yeah. Yep. There's, that, there's that line in 12 monkeys where he's where they're watching i think vertigo and he goes uh you watch it at different part, part, part points of your life and it's a different movie the movie hasn't mm -hmm. changed but you have yeah so you're yep. seeing things that you didn't see before so yeah, after after um after uh you know the child like empress is being like no it's fine you got him you you succeeded good job oh, good. and then cool. but but then he's like exactly as you were saying like having the dorothy moment of like excuse me you knew about him the whole time. You mean my horse didn't have to fucking die? <laughs> my <laughs> horse died, you bitch. My horse is back here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgive me, Your Highness. Um, but but uh, there there is finally a moment where she does kind of start to get sad, and he says, "Well, well, what will happen if he doesn't appear?" And then she does sort of start to cry and get a sad look on her face, and she says, "Then our world will disappear," and um like things are starting to crumble all around them even in the ivory tower and and bastion is like there's a storm whipping up outside the school building and like thunder and lightning is crashing all over and you know bastion is just like losing his shit because how the fuck can this be happening mm -hmm. <laughs> again squishy moment blah. um but then he's kind of accepted that yeah, maybe it is kind of happening. I don't know how it couldn't be. Um, but then he's stuck with this horrible, paralyzing fear. Like, I can't be the one to save you. I'm, I'm, I'm nothing. What can I do? What can I do? Uh, and, and then you get the line that everybody makes fun of. Name. Everybody makes fun of it. <laughs> Bastion, say my name. <laughs> and you see all those little memes. Like say my name, bitch. They make, they make fun There's of it. Fucking I, uh, Breaking your Bad, if you Never Ending Story crossovers. I, I, I watched a, a, I don't know if it was a Collider <laughs> video about Never Ending Story, but they said um, people who laugh at that uh, really haven't given a lot of thought to uh, the power of what you call things. And, exactly. And um, so uh, you know, like, it, and 
because he's constantly being bullied, so he's being called names and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, <laughs> There's the weirdo. Like, yeah. ugh. But, you guys have uh, the worst insults. The, go, the, go steal somebody yeah, else's lunch right. money. <laughs> the solution is for him to 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 name his pain. Mm-hmm. He actually says it out loud. It's been causing. Yeah. It. Yeah. That's, that's what gives him. You know, well, and and of course, you know, yes, pain is painful. But at the same time, it can also be the impetus for a lot of things. And like, if this is like, there is no like bomb timer counting down to zero and, you know, like clipping the wire right as it hits one or like, you know, zero, 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 sure zero, felt point, like it though. <laughs> zero, five seconds. Yeah, yeah. No, that's exactly what it is though. And then suddenly Bastion is there in the dark. And uh, I, I, I love, I love what the Empress says. She's like, in the beginning, it is always dark. Um, and uh, she tells him, she gives it to him, like just little tiny seed. Boop. What, what's, what's the, uh, the biblical story? The, the mustard seed. Mm-hmm. It's the teeniest, tiniest seed that they grows are, into the oh, okay. biggest fucking tree. Yeah. Um, and she says, uh, you know, you make a wish and you will start rebuilding this world. And the, and he asks, how many wishes do I get? As many as you want. Yeah. Um, and in, in other contexts that might be like, mm, this is a trap. Yeah. Uh, but in this context, it's like, no, you, you actually have a lot of power here. You've, you've been through a lot and uh, it may have feel like it didn't, it may feel like it diminished you. Um, and, or, or even like, maybe it didn't diminish you. Maybe it just brought out into the open, you know, how, 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 uh, or at least that you think you're, you're small and worthless and uh, weak and powerless. But in fact, you have all this potential inside you if you are willing to uh, say it out loud, if you are willing to put that energy out into the world, look what you can make. And of course, what is what is his first wish? What is his first wish? To go fly a down car and, and go after I know the this, bullies. I know, I know this is off. <laughs> I don't. I. But even so, like it makes it makes me think of Falcor. Yeah. Um, and again, the thing that everybody makes fun of when they think of this movie. Yeah. But you know what? Fuck you. He's right. having the time of his life. I would love to go riding on Falcor. Fuck yeah. Um, I. I do, I've always had kind of like a little bit of a problem with the fact that like, not only is his first wish, well, and I, I think Falco even says, what will your next wish be? And he's like, oh, I know. I'm gonna Rough fucking bags. get back at those jackasses. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and while it is kind of like satisfying in a mean way to, sit, to see Falcor like open up his giant fucking mouth. And scare the shit out of these boys, and the the adults see him too. You see the adults like fucking run to the side and scatter. Yep. Uh, and I think one of them like almost like but trips over I, the trunk, or not the trunk, the uh, the hood of a car. But I don't think he's actually physically in the real world like we're seeing him. It's a visual representation uh, of the fact that that uh, Bastion Bastion is now using his imagination in the real world and and has embraced maybe. it as a thing of power. So he maybe. So you know, using mm-hmm. But I still like the idea of him chasing the bullies down the street on a fucking dragon. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Sorry, was yeah. That and, and, <laughs> yeah. No. And I like. And and maybe maybe what it was was that like that's what's happening in his mind, and he's using that as kind of his his inspiration to stand up for himself. And IRL, what's happening is this a huge rush, funny tweet, and he says, "Nah, that's okay. All right, well then we're gonna throw you in the dumpster again. No, that's all right. Bye." And he just starts walking away. Like, we're gonna get you. Yeah. Okay. See you at school. Yeah. Get back to me on it's that. Like, I'm good. Fuck you guys. No, he's that. I don't know. I I think part of the reason that like actually seeing that play out, I'm like, no, Bastion is a nice boy. He wouldn't do that. <laughs> he doesn't want to make other people feel scared and badly. But I I completely understand. Like when you're an 11 year old, that feels like taking the power back. Definitely. So I, I get it. I get it. Is this the quintessential squishy philosophy put to film, or is it, or or there's other things you'd like to see? Fantasy. 
I'd say it's definitely in the top five, especially when we're talking about fantasy. I have a few other films that, get, that are a bit darker in their squishiness that we will get to at some point in time. Um, I've been still hoping and praying that at some point we can have the excuse of Criterion finally breaking down and adding Naked Lunch, for example. Mm -hmm. um, because, wow, that film is dark as fuck, but also incredibly squishy. Um, but to me, I think that it speaks to the idea that we can influence, that our dreams can influence the world and that we can recreate um, a reality as a result of that. And to me, I think that that's absolutely the best part of the whole film is the idea that my dreams help to save this goddamn world. All right, I'm in. You know, that that made me happy on a whole bunch of ways. Well, that and, like, even when it feels like you've lost everything, and, I, I mean, like, it's there's so many times throughout this movie for, for Atreyu that you're just like, how can shit get any worse? And then it gets worse. Um, Never, but, ever but, ask but, that question. Yeah, don't actually ask that question. Maybe don't even think it. No. Um, but but for Bastion, that's what it feels like. He he does feel like he's lost everything because he's lost his mother. Uh, by the way, I I looked up uh, Bastion's full name. His middle name is Balthazar. So uh -huh. his mom absolutely was totally into Arturian legends. Uh, and like I I think she she kind of imparted that and, love and, into and, him. And it wasn't something that he picked up at, and, and, after his mom died. And it's interesting that uh, his, she was the the fantasy. She was the one that allowed his fantasy, and and had fantasy in her own life. And then when she died, um, his embrace of fantasy now is a way of keeping her alive. Yeah. So. But yeah, if, even yeah. even after you've lost everything, or it feels like you've lost everything, there is a little speck. There is a little grain of something that you can carry forward with you, and. You know, if if you can latch onto that, you can you can pull yourself forward. It may start out small. It may take a very long time to rebuild things, but it can happen. You can absolutely do it. And and that's why I brought up the, the sequel, uh, even though I don't really care for it. Um, but you actually get to see uh, that Bastion has made all these wishes and has like totally rebuilt Fantasia and all of these, he, he brought back some of the things, probably, I, I would say he he probably would like feel bad about not bringing anybody back mm -hmm. uh, from what he read the first time in the story. Like gotta bring back the rock biter, gotta bring back, oh, that reminds me, Um, mm, can't remember his name. The guy in the top hat who rides the racing snail. Help me. <laughs> I don't remember it either. <laughs> um, oh, heck. Em. I, I've got a, I think it's Deep Roy. Is that who it is? Yeah, Deep Roy. Yeah, uh, he's, he's got to bring back Deep Roy and the racing snail. He's got to bring back the rock fighter. He's got to bring back uh, the, uh, the night hob and his bat. Nobody cares about me and my stupid bat. Bastion. Bastion cares about you and your stupid bat friend. So there. Uh, he, he brings back a Treyu and Artax. I swear, I swear to God, like I, I started to cry again after I saw him flying over. It's like Artax is back. Oh, thank fuck. One of, the, one of the things that I thought would be interesting about this episode that I didn't get to bring up because John was uh, just uh, um, hating on it. Yeah, um, I was just going to ask everybody. I curse you and your empty, <laughs> your empty square down there, John. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I was gonna uh, ask everybody if there was a book for them that kind of uh, you know, like offered them encouragement or anything like that. Mm. And I, but I, I, I hesitate to bring it up now because I don't know if I want to. You know, I think that might be a long topic. But I don't know. I'll throw yeah. it out there because there were two. There were two books I definitely read to death in grade school. Mm -hmm. um, one was a book called "Have Spacesuit Will Travel" by Robert Heinlein, um, one of his juvenile novels, and it was just a wonderful piece of escapism. Um, Crap. And now, oh, and the other one was A Wrinkle in Time, which I read over and oh, I think everybody. I haven't read it, but what? I saw the movie. I saw the movie and I liked it. <laughs> oh, read the book. I mean, don't get me wrong. The movie actually. I was going to say. As much, as, as much as the movie tanked, the book, it did a good job, but the book is absolutely one of those things pretty. that makes you smile. What's that? Oh, I said, I thought the movie was pretty. Yeah, for me, it would be uh, The Alchemist, but. It would be the what? The Alchemist, Paulo Coelho. Oh, okay. I was older, but I 
I would, I'd have to think on it a little bit. I'm, I'm tempted to say uh, Alice in Wonderland um, because that was, my, my parents had these, uh, the, these like very nice presentational, uh, like, you know, multi uh, like each, each, all, all of them had, like, these items. Deep, deep jewel tone, uh, you know, uh, parlor books basically. And, but like everything was in there. They weren't just a facade. Um, but you know, they had the nice gold leafing around the edges mm -hmm. and, uh, the, the good leather bound hardbacks and, uh, there, it was like the cl a classics collection. So, you know, there was uh war and peace. There was, uh, a tale of mice and men, uh, or no, my, is that what it is? A tale of mice tale and of men? two cities and of, a tale of, of two city and of and mice of and men. I men. definitely oh. merged those two. Whoops. A tale of two <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, line in Google. I haven't said press play. Press play. Uh, if you haven't watched it in a long, long time and you remember finding it cheesy, that's cool. That's cool. No. Watch it. Watch it on a day where where you're feeling a little fragile. Watch it on a day when you are need encouragement. Yeah. Well, you need encouragement, or or when you just feel like like really relaxed and kind of in an inexplicably good mood not like a super bouncy good mood like, watch it when like you're I depressed. am right now watch it when you're depressed too because it'll it'll it has a positive yeah ending. yeah there there are there are a number of times that you could go back and watch it just to give it another try um you might want to maybe be careful watching it when you're depressed because it might just depress you more <laughs> oh, <don't. laughs> Um, but I think, I think there's, there's, well, and I also think it's kind of, it, it's fun to go back and watch it in kind of a, like a, in a friendly ribbing kind of way, like, and yeah, you kind of make fun of some certain stuff, uh, and some certain lines because the kid who plays Bastion is a little, is a little bit green. He's pretty young. Uh, but that's impossible. I kind of like that though. It kind of but, yeah, well again, yeah, it it's it 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 kind of works and there's there's something so there's something so sweet and and pure about kind of the over the topness uh that happens with that that uh I I think it's also kind of just fun to like have on in the background uh and you know like having a bevy uh with your friends or maybe a pipe whatever you got. And uh, be like, ooh, 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 here he comes. Here's Falcor. He's going to do the wink. He's going to do the wink. Do the thing. <laughs> so press play. Yes, definitely press play. D Dave? Uh, press play and then take your instrument of choice and smack down upside the head. Um, yes. Uh, I mean, okay, I get it. Maybe you're <laughs> press in a play, bad mood. Maybe take off a... the play button, enlarge, and go whap. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, I get it. I understand that, you know, if you're not in the right mood to see this film, it definitely won't. It'll hit you in the wrong places. Yeah. But or when you're or it just head, won't hit at all. And it seems like it's trying too hard. I get that. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's a fun fantasy film. It has a great message. It mm -hmm. definitely is one of those things that, you know, if ever there was a, uh, a poster for the trope of earn your happy ending, this is it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but in the end, it feels like everything is in its right place when you're done. Yeah. And and even if some of the themes feel like are you're you're getting bashed over the head with them, I they I don't I never felt like they were bashing me over the head with the actual plot. Like like I said about exposition, I don't want to be bashed about the face with it. I would almost prefer you just like drop me in the middle of this world that I know nothing about, which is why and it's just a, let shit happen. Just let is, shit happen. I don't need is, you to explain it to me. Which is why it's a better movie because we don't see the mother die. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Although um, you know, I, still getting run over by a boulder Disney, would have been a great John. effect. <laughs> Uh, press play. Not I Bambi. I think I think this is the best family film uh, of the '80s, right after ET. Um, where else are you going to get a children's movie that has metatextualism and uh, you know, like uh, just makes you actually? <laughs> Have think... you ever wanted to break your seven-year-old's mind? Here's the opportunity. <laughs> break it early so that it learns to be flexible. It'll rebuild yes. itself. Children are small and squishy for a reason. Create those new synaptic connections early. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like every year, Doctor. But seriously, like, though, 
it's like every year a doctor will tell you the great thing about small children is that if, as long as all the pieces are in the same room, you can probably reassemble them. Yeah, yeah. And well, th- and <laughs> go ahead. Oh, I, I was say, I think it's brilliant the way it's laid out structurally. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I, I mean, it's a children's movie, so I'm always aware of that as well. So that when there's over the topness in there, um, I yeah. just, I just, I just let that go because that's just part of the deal. Um, and and part actually part of the contract of the movie is you're making a contract with a narrative, so you're almost so having an added contract of being able to accept. Yeah, this is a child reading this book, but this is also how I. This is also about me reading a book, um, right? Like, so, um, yeah, press, press play. play, press yeah. play again and again. I don't know how anybody can be vehemently against the movie, but I guess there are people who. Will, <laughs> In uh, of taste, John left his there soul is no disputing. Yes, everyone has the right to their own opinion, and even if it's wrong, even if it's I have the right to make wrong. fun of you. Just kidding. Just kidding. No, you're wrong. I'm, not, I'm, in, I'm not kidding. In, in matters of taste, <laughs> in matters of taste, there there is no disputing. It's on my family crest for a reason. Oh, okay. Um, I agree with there, that as a philosophy, but this is the never ending story. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, no, but but not in this case. This is the exception that proves the rule. If if you don't like this movie, um, that's fine. But you're wrong, and, and you just if you want to go through your life being wrong, that's fine. You have the power to do that. Yes, we live in America. It's a free country. Um, there is one last little thing that I would like to bring up, and I know we don't have a whole lot of time. I know you, yeah, you're probably pretty much done here, mm-hmm. but uh, the the name of Bastion's mother that he yells out the window. Moonchild. Did anybody, yeah, well, yeah, it's Moonchild, but when you guys first saw this movie, Mariah. could you hear what that name was? I heard Mariah until I saw the subtitles. No, no, see, that's that's what the wind is called. Mariah. Can we watch Paint Your Wagon sometime? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> that's, it. That's. I bet you that one is going to be one where John is just like, why would you do this to me? This <laughs> movie is so many hours long. What, 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 You're a monster. What what really uh, surprises me is that John actually is the person that likes everything. <laughs> and this is and this yet never is, ending story. Yeah. yeah. Oh well. So yeah, um, press play. But yeah, what, what what's what's Moonchild? Like, was that her actual I, I name? Think, Were her I parents think, hippies? I think that that was a nickname that she may have went by. Okay. That, and, okay. And and that's and maybe the father didn't like being you know using that name, and um, when you know he, that's probably the first time that name has been said out loud since she died. Yeah. And it, I you know. I love I love that. That's I mean that that like I I never knew that before I started kind of like writing up my notes for this. I, that really resonates with me personally because I am also a moon child. I'm I'm a Cancer. I'm a water dragon. And, uh, you know, my, my favorite stones are moonstone and opal. And uh, I, as I have expressed many times, every time it's nighttime, no matter what I'm doing or what kind of mood I'm in, if I see the moon in the sky, I will drop my shoulders and go, you guys, look at the moon. So I, 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 I love that that's what it was. I, I love you, Bastion's mom. I love you. I, I do too. You're a wonderful human being and I, you will be missed. Yep. Did, uh, and I love you guys. Oh, Even you, John. You as well. And yeah, uh, I think John will probably he'll be like, oh man, I, I'm sorry. You guys like, well, <laughs> fine. It was just entertaining <laughs> to kind of pile on them a little bit. But, you know. Every now and again. We, we I'm not looking you. forward to the day where everyone's going to pile on me uh, for something <laughs> that I'm like, no, this was wonderful. And you're all wrong. And you're like, no, nope, you're the one who's wrong. Or I'm like, you all think this is great, but it's actually terrible.
Well, I also have another set of dice here that I am going to use to roll the stats. All right, a two and the two stand for oh a new boy. character and a five. Intelligence got a three, a five, and a two. Wisdom. <laughs> Five. Dexterity. All right, there we go, 17. 